What's up guys TG here and I will talk to you about preparing yourself to make gold in 6.2 and to continue making gold after. 6.2 brings a whole lot of new content and with it a whole ton of changes to professions. I'll try and cover as much as I can with this video but it's still in PTR and changes may happen. This is just a basic guide of how to not fail in the economy when 6.2 releases. I'll hopefully be updating these PTR videos once the final build is through or once the patch hits live servers. First off let me start by thanking Blizzard for reviving the much forgotten gathering professions. I Thank you Blizzard, just thanks a lot for that. For those of you who are not aware of this or for those of you who don't reach the patch, read the patches or updates for that PTR builds offer, Blizzard announced that uh, last time with its first PTR build that there will be a new higher level blood in 6.2 called Flail Blood which is similar to Savage Blood and obtainable by, from the barn. But even before they changed it, I found a problem when I was roaming around in Talan jungle where there were not many fell animals at all that I saw or not any animals in, in general that could be trapped by which I mean wolves, river beasts, hyenas or tall, tall bucks that can be trapped with current uh, bar traps. I didn't even see any improved trap for whatever new trap is. I only saw a bunch of river beasts at a lake, a small lake and, at that, and that was about it so I wondered how this fell blood would work. But then two days back, Blizzard pushed a new PTR build in which they entirely removed fell blood and made a new item called fell blight. Now, Fell Blight is very, very different from Fell Blood. Instead of instead of coming from the barn or any trapping games or whatever that kind of trapping shit, this crafting region comes as a rare side drop for gathering proficients. And that's right, you heard it right, it drops from gathering proficients. And if you didn't know already, gathering proficients have almost been useless uh, since ward release because of the barn and for skinning, herb garden for herbalism, mines for the mining and fishing shack for fishing. But fishing didn't entirely die so since the change has occurred, I've seen a lot of people who drop their gathering profession after ward release get, get a bit pissed off or agitated. But then again, there was never a time or a guide where I read or saw that I saw that people should start dropping the gathering provisions. It was not mentioned anywhere that we should just drop the gathering provisions and become something else. But if you did read something, or re read, read about something uh, anywhere, and you're just blaming that guy, none of us have had an idea of gathering provisions coming back or being a revival. Now for me, with six souls, it's fine because I have all provisions maxed out and I can make fell blight from any of them but I just wish blizzard gave a warning or at least tried to keep gathering provisions in the ballpark and then again it's blizzard so you just got you just gotta deal with it man you just gotta deal with it so let's get back to making gold as soon as 6.2 its live servers first off start saving your crafting regions from any time you feel comfortable or from any time you feel like you're not going to be selling any more of them since you have enough gold or just save up, save them up until 6.2 its live servers True steel iron for blacksmithing, burnished leather for leather working, alchemist candles for alchemy, talarite crystal for jewel crafting, temporal crystals for engine enchanting. These didn't receive much changes, but it's optional. Extreme cloth for tailoring and gear spring parts for engineering, and also wall paints for inscription are the things I'm talking about. Uh, the amount of these items created by daily cooldowns are also being greatly increased with all the sorceress elements, which is a good idea. I want you guys to save these items because new essences are coming up in 6.2, which upgrades items from 685 to 700. That essence is called Mighty Essence, and then the one that upgrades from 700 to 715 is called Savage Essence. And weapons, I, I'm not really sure what the state of weapons is for guns and stuff, but uh, I'll let you guys know when the next video comes up. Now, if you're selling these essences or making them for yourself, that's on your own. Uh, but this video concentrates on selling them. So once you have a bunch of these saved up, maybe 800 to 1000 based on each profession, you could you should easily be make, um, able to make uh, at least 30 to 40k per essence or whatever items you're crafting. Based on how farm you, how fast you farm fell blight, and for those who think you can just stand in a pool and fish all day for these fell blights, beware! These these are gonna there are gonna be major differences in the drop rate of fell blight dropping from a fish and dropping from a herb. Uh, and also you have to run around Tanan jungle farming these. They only drop from Tanan jungle, by the way. If you're herbing in Shadow Moon Valley and expecting uh, fell blight to drop, it's not gonna drop. It's only on Tanan jungle. Now that covers most of the profession uh, that you make for gear and on jewel crafting there's a new crystal called Immaculate Taradites. To learn these recipes you gotta go through a small quest apparently, a very small quest. I don't know if it happens in Tanan jungle or somewhere else but you just gotta do that for jewel crafting. 
A lot of these crafts that already exist like alchemy trinkets and current essences will require way lesser item regions to create and also you don't have greater and powerful essences anymore. But normal essence itself like XP essence or burnished essence will upgrade item from 640 up until 685 just by adding 15 item levels to it every time you use the item. Or not, you can't use the same item of course, you gotta use different essences. Instead of going from 640 to 655, this is at 640 plus 650. Plus 15, that's 65, and then to 670, and then to 65. Uh, I also suggest saving up on ore and herbs since they will always come in handy to use. And uh, having around 300 on each herb, three sorry, 3000 on each herb, and around 5000 on each ore should last you very long. Choose wisely what you craft and what you save upon. Again, for people without all, this is entirely based on you. The decision is entirely based on you. Uh, best for you and if you want a crafting profession take a crafting profession if you don't want a crafting profession don't take one if you want a gathering profession take one i don't care because you have you don't have that many odds and you are gonna you just have to base your decisions on what's important for you and for people with more than six odds or something like that you could you could basically copy paste this video and survive in six point very well uh, and it's just it's just that easy in war but 6.2 might give you a better, bit of trouble but i will keep updating on how the changes are and how i'm making money thanks for watching guys have a great day and continue your adventures bye bye